Hey everyone, welcome to No Ideas Media. My name is Nick Syke, and these organic grapefruits are GMO. You surprised? Well, let's crack this open. Organic means free from GMO, right? Not really. Everything we eat has had its genetics altered or modified in some way. And before you roll your eyes at me and think, oh God, this old argument again, he thinks genetic engineering and traditional breeding are the same thing, that's not what I'm actually saying. Genetic engineering and traditional breeding are absolutely different, for sure, 100%. Like this car and this truck, yeah, they both have four wheels, some windows, and some things in common, but that's a car, that's a truck, clearly different, but they're both automobiles. I take issue with saying GMO means only genetic engineering, just like I'd take issue if you told me automobile only means truck or car. Now, this is a point of contention for a lot of anti-GMO pro-organic people out there. I've debated this lots. Pragmatically speaking, GMO, genetically modified organism, is like the term automobile. It's an umbrella term. GMO means genetically modified organism. Traditionally bred plants and genetically engineered plants both are organisms that have had their genetics modified. Okay, so word games, that's what I'm making you sit through right now? Yes, actually, because the word games here are really important to understand. By every pragmatic and reasonable definition of the term, GMO refers to all food. Organic rules exclude genetic engineering, but they call it genetic modification instead and say they're GMO free. It would be like a delivery company saying that automobile only means car and then saying they're automobile free while using trucks to deliver their packages. With GMOs, the organic industry is calling cars automobiles, saying they're automobile free, and then driving trucks instead. Oh, and then marketing the idea that automobiles are very, very bad. Except trucks, those aren't automobiles. And they're fine. You know, don't think about it too much, just hop in the organic truck. Now the truck in this admittedly labored metaphor is mutagenesis. Mutation is not a controlled process, really. It's random, and it modifies genetics randomly, and often pretty extensively, and it doesn't really give us an understanding of the changes being made. Mutagenesis allows us to get from A to Z really quickly, but it isn't showing us how it got us there. Does anyone disagree that this sounds like genetic modification? It certainly is. Any crop that is derived from mutagenesis is a GMO. Period. And I am happy to debate this until we're both blue in the face. And taking one more logical step forward, any time a mutagenic crop was grown in an organic production system, that would be an organic crop that was genetically modified. <gasps> okay, so guess how many mutant varieties of food there are in the world? Over 3,200. This is the MVD, the Mutant Variety Database. It lists all the crops in the world that are mutagenic. So I've been asking around and I found the following organic products that came from mutagenesis. So here are some organic GMOs. The Caledonian Brewing Company, based in the anti-GMO United Kingdom, makes an English pale ale called Golden Promise, named after Golden Promise barley, which is used in its creation. Now this barley is genetically modified by exposing it to gamma rays. It's also used to produce organic whiskey, which we all might need a shot of after this just to wrap our heads around it. Then there's Lundberg organic rice, which is made from a variety of rice called Kalros, another mutant variety that's been genetically modified using gamma rays. And if you don't know Lundberg, how about just most of the rice in Japan? All of it has this SD1 mutant allele from Remy rice, which was created by modifying its genes with mutagenesis. Oh, here's a fun one if you want to mess with some hippies. Do you know anyone who's into essential oils? Pick them up some Oshadim peppermint oil. It's made from Murray Mitchum peppermint, which was mutated to be wilt tolerant. Organic navy beans? Yeah, those are also known as Sanilac beans, which are genetically modified with x-ray radiation. Sanilac beans were also used in crossbreeding to create Seaway beans if you're into those. And in anti-GMO France, half of the sunflowers grown, period, were genetically modified with mutagenesis to have higher levels of oleic acid. So you can buy organic high oleic sunflower oil, and as this article points out, this oil from sunflowers that's been mutated with radiation is a great way to avoid GMOs. Or in Australia, where Sunrise brought back the Amaru rice variety in 2016, specifically for organic growers. Amaru? Yep, that's a mutant. 
And finally, our little pink friend here. This is a Rio Red grapefruit. It and Star Ruby grapefruits are both varieties of the Rio Star grapefruit, which is a very popular organic crop variety genetically modified using thermal neutron techniques. You can see why the organic industry doesn't want to deal with explaining this to you because nothing, nothing feels less organic than the words thermal neutron mutant grapefruit. Try rationalizing that to a consumer that you've convinced to avoid anything remotely unnatural sounding. It's not gonna happen. This is why playing with words matters. It can have serious and confusing consequences. The organic industry were the first to call genetic engineering GMO. Then they excluded GMO and spent a lot of time and energy convincing consumers GMO was something to avoid. Actually fairly clever from a marketing perspective, but in the end, short-sighted, really short-sighted. Because people like me are starting to point out the logical contradiction inherent in saying GMO only means GE. Again, genetically modified organism is an umbrella term. Like it's really hard for me to figure out why somebody would hate genetic engineering on a concept level, but be perfectly fine with mutagenesis. So what's the organic industry's response to all this? Well, there are actually calls now to ban mutagenic crops from organic production because the definition of GMO is widening and people are actually recognizing that it is an umbrella term. The organic industry is in a really awkward spot with respect to its use of mutagenesis, which reasonable people would consider genetic modification. You can't have that in organic production by your own rules, so... But as I said before, mutant crops have been the basis for breeding other crops. The process gets mixed with other processes and watered down, and at some points it's pretty hard to say if a crop is traditionally bred or mutagenic or whatever. Geez, it's almost like there's a spectrum of ways to modify the genes of our food, and taking an exclusionary approach because it has a short-term marketing benefit ends up biting the ass of people who think that way. Shocked. There are so many reasons why genetic engineering and organic production would complement each other and why calling genetic engineering genetic modification is a bad idea and why organic really does mean GMO in some cases. Thanks for watching. 